today. Kind of gave me an inkling there that that may be the way it's going to go. We are about to go in the way, ladies and gentlemen. It is the last game of the LCS here at DreamHack. It has been fantastic to be in front of you guys and the players themselves. They have appreciated it. They love to come to these live events as do we. And let's hope it is going to be a cracker. So the blue team, it is going to be SK Gaming. And well, Crepo is going to walk headlong straight in towards SK Gaming there. Herkibot didn't really react to that one very quickly. And I feel he's just going to walk away from this one. Shadow Dash comes out, forces the flash out of Crepo. Yeah, and I think Herkibot there was toying with the idea of putting on point in Wither. And then he's like, hang on a minute, I'm in the jungle. If I do that, I <laughs> might not have the most successful at start. So, you know, Crepo getting away. They forced a flash out of him as well, which... In all honesty, is a good start for them. We can see a pink ward put down here by SK to get rid of that ward that they saw Crepo put down earlier on. So they've got a lot of control in terms of vision on the blue side of the uh, EG jungle. Yeah, and you can see there's the pink ward that SK just placed as well. And I think Crepo's going to come straight back and put a pink ward of his own down there. Yep. <laughs> the pink ward war has begun. This is a little battle that's going to go on between the two support players. And Evil Geniuses are going to be going down the bottom lane with Crepo and Yellow Pete. We are also going to be seeing Candy Panda and Nip going down there as well. So standard lanes will be set up. It is going to be Wicked, of course, on Rise as well. He is going to be going up against the top lane of Shen. So I'm not too sure how that one will develop. Of course, we have seen so much rise in the top lane in the Korean scene. It's only a matter of time before it broke in towards the European scene. Yeah, I think every top laner right now is uh, doing yeah. a lot of uh, time in preparing their rise because it is, quite frankly, just a, a phenomenal champion to have um, in that lane as well. Uh, on the other side, we can see there Snoopy actually just starting off with that red buff. It's exactly the same over the other side for her Q-Bots. Nasus, who is currently doing the red as well, getting help from his duo lane in the bottom. And actually, SK are going to be coming in here, and they managed to get in there before any of those minions have actually gone down. So that's a nice little start for Candy Panda. The difference here that Snoopy used the smite on the red buff, and Herkibot went smiteless, so he's just going to go around and take that blue buff with ease. Well, you can see Snoopy, he's going to be working that blue buff down as well, so they will be both taking that one. He is on top of a ward, though, so SK Gaming know exactly the path that he's taken so far. The mid lane is where the action will be happening now. Ocelot on towards Frog, and if either of these catch onto each other, it will be carnage. It's going to be Ocelot that's going to be looking to just jump all over Frog, and when he gets the chance, I expect to see Frog and probably going to level up that shield a little bit more. The light binding catch is straight on him, as I mentioned, straight burst of damage onto Ocelot. Yeah, and you see Frog in there, the mastery of looks, making sure to get that auto attack off after the light binding and then after um, that Lucent Singularity as well. So really, really strong play from Froggen. Very strong oh, play indeed in these early levels. So, well, what, do, what do we think is going to, how is this going to work out? I mean, let's, let's just take a look across that. They've actually got fairly similar items as well. They're going to be sticking out those tier of the goddess, both these guys, early on. AD carry's gone the same, supports have gone the same. Heck, the top lanes are going to be the only difference, but obviously you would expect that. Wicked's going to build himself fairly tanky, so he's not going to be the target that Ocelot's going to be jumping for. Instead, it's going to be possibly Yellow Feet. He can jump away. Froggen's really the only target Ocelot's going to be aiming for in these fights, but I'm not too sure he's going to be able to have the chance to get on him because Froggen, he's played Lux so damn much, he's going to be well aware of this matchup. Yeah, and we see Wicked start there going in for that Mana Crystal. Make sure that actually is Overload does a lot of damage in the early level because of that extra mana that he's gone in for first. Waiting to see. Kevin Herkibot is just off the side there. Ocelot gets caught once again in the light binding. Frog is not going to go too heavily on that one. Using a lot of mana in that lane, but judging it well, he has got a mana pot in his pocket, so no problems there. CS in terms between the two, flat across all of the lanes. No advantage given early on as we approach the five minute mark. Bottom lane as well has been Little bits of damage exchange between the two AD carries, but nothing really too much to write home about. And both, of course, starting with that Doran's blade. As here we see in the middle, Frog again lands the, uh, the light binding on towards Ocelot. And that's just the, the thing about Frog that mechanically is so very, very good. And it's not often you see him miss those skill shots. But if Ocelot keeps trying, the one that he does miss may just get him a kill. Yeah, trying to put some doubt into Wicked's mind as well there. The way they backed away from that mid lane, they both went into that bush. There's no ward there. 
One of them backed away, one of them went to top. Herkibot, you can see, now lingering in that bush. But Kevin's got the wave pushed up pretty aggressively. Snoopy is now heading there because of the doubt they put in that mine. They've got their own ward in that tri bush, no wards at all in the river. So Wicked completely blind at the top there, which is not something new to him. It's something that Wicked kind of always does. He just has that, I don't know, that, that sort of sixth sense to tell when someone's coming. He kind of knows Snoopy's going to sneak in towards that top bush. I think we're going to see to both junglers clashing here. Yeah, and that's one thing that Wicked always said that I don't usually buy ward because I feel when I'm, <laughs> when I'm actually going to get ganked here. We are going to see Kevin land the taunt onto Snoopy. <laughs> and he's like, wow, I didn't even know that the ball was camping inside the brush there. And that will mean that they back off and no kills coming from that one. Five minutes 45 in there, all pretty much bang on even, no kills just yet. Play from Nip, meanwhile on the bottom lane on Yellow Peak, tried to throw out the hook as well, didn't land there, but Candy Panda did put a bit of good damage down on towards him. Ocelot returns to mid lane, he puts damage down towards Froggen, but instantly, line binding comes out, there is the armor, and look how Froggen, he's just going straight back aggressive on this one, not afraid of Kazix one bit. No, and I think that's the, the right way to do it. We are going to see the hook land here on towards Yellow Peak instantly uses the barrier and will rocket jump off towards safety, and there again. I feel like we see every time we see Thresh, but the danger is always there. You have to be on your toes constantly with that Thresh. Three summoner spells burnt out there. Nif put the Ignite straight down. Barrier and Exhaust were used by Evil Geniuses, so that bottom lane is going to be right for the picket to expect to see the jungler heading that way sometime soon. Nif already starting to create opportunities on Thresh, as you always would expect. And simply for Evil Geniuses, they're just going to play defensively here. They're going to try and put as much damage down as they can trying to kind of keep that turret away, but you kind of expect it. When Thresh is in there, they are going to be the aggressor. Yeah, I would totally agree with that one. I think that's why he's ended up going in for Tristana as well, because, you know, it is a little bit more, you've got a rocket jump to get yourself away from things. The ultimate can knock uh, that Thresh away from things as well. So, interesting to see how that one all develops here on that bottom side, as the uh, both bottom lanes aren't going to actually head themselves home. And then we see the triple longsword coming out again uh, for the Ezreal. And a cutlass picked up by Tristan. It's Ocelot here, gonna get a lot of damage in the middle. The laser came through, and Froggen once again, he's done. He's used that position a couple of times, he's gone as though he's going in towards the river, hit behind the wall, and then thrown a full combo out. And you saw exactly how much damage it can do there to the Kami. Stepping out of vision range. And Froggen is one of those players that insists, especially on looks, you just use that laser all of the time. The moment yep. it's off cooldown, you are looking to use that laser. And he was going to be looking for that aggression. And Ocelot was forced straight back there, again towards that uh, mana immunity that's going to get built up for him. But it does mean he's going to miss out on a wave of CS. And you can see it's actually created a gap instantly. 63 CS for Froggen, meanwhile, 47 for Ocelot. If you can just keep doing that, it's going to slowly win that CS battle. Niv coming back towards this bottom lane, looking to create those hooks again, seeing if he can get up towards Yellow Peak, but doesn't matter the aggression there from the rest of Evil Genius is pushing the MIP, just making sure he stays behind that minion wave. Yeah, I think he's going to explode there on this bottom lane at some point, and the jungle has not really been involved there, but Snoopy got him off the blue buff here, as is his opposite number for Ocelot. And then we'll have to see if they decide to come down and visit this bottom lane. Hook did just come out there from Nif, but that didn't quite connect. Candy Panda did take a bit of a hit from Yellow Pete in the meantime as well. Took a bit of a burst. Finish Koenig's been picked up by Froggen as well. So getting close to completing his first items. Tyr of the Goddess was picked up by both of them as we expected earlier on. Build water cut this by Yellow Pete. Candy Panda, like you mentioned, went for those triple long swords. We saw Soaz doing exactly the same actually earlier on yeah. on Kazix. Didn't work out so well for him though, but Giant's Belt also on Kevin. Well, shock horror, he's going to be built towards the Sunlight Cave with the Warmogs. Split pushing Kevin on Shen. Who would have thought it? No one. It's a, a complete <laughs> re uh, revelation to us there with that one. Uh, but no, that's, that's obviously what the, the Shen does best, to be honest with you. He's yeah. going to keep going, keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Right now, he's actually ahead in CS of that rise as we are in the bottom. They're going to see the jump in. Here comes the Lantern oh, wow. Gang, the hook as well. It's a yellow peak. Wild growth has been used, but he's not escaping this one. First blood comes down for Herkubot. Brilliant, brilliant combo from SK Gaming there. The moment you saw that Dark Passage Lantern thrown backwards, you knew it was going to be a dog being launched in towards him. It's a dog delivery system there for Herkubot being thrown in towards him. And now you can see also he's going to come back down. They're going to try and three-man stack, but Snoopy's there. They're going to go head-to-head -head in the tri-bush. Herkubot comes around the side, but they still have the minion wave, and EG forced to back away from this bottom turret.
Yeah, and they're going to give it a good bash in here. It's going to take at least half of its health before EG actually come back in here and try to do some stuff. As we can see, Snoopy yeah, played there as well, but there's no... Not enough damage, really. And certainly not the position in there right under the turret to be picking up a kill in that scenario. So, early first blood coming in for SK. I say early, wasn't all that early. Around about nine minutes coming in from that one. Uh, and they have a nice little gold lead thanks to that as well. Well, Herkibot hasn't backed away. They know that they just put a pink ward and they've cleared out their ward. So, they, they're unsure right now in that bottom lane. Snoopy has backed away though, so still three members of SK Gaming sat ready and waited. They may go for a second gank straight back onto Yellow P. Certainly looks that way. They're actually going to go in onto Crepo in the end. He's in a lot of trouble. Does have Flash available. Uses it and actually gets him away. Oh. Misses there with a true shot barrage. Oh. And SK Gaming failed to lock down both Crepo and Yellow Pete there for the kill. That Flash expertly timed from Crepo. Great skill play there. And it just shows that the level of play that these players have in them. So no matter how well or bad it's going for you, they still have that skill ability in there. Ocelot starting to get those waves cleared much quicker now that of course he's got that long sword. Once that man of Munich gets picked up along with those void spikes, he's gonna not have too many problems keeping Frog and shoving on towards that turret. Kevin being pushed away from the wave here, being zoned out effectively by Wicked right now being kept well away from it. Hasn't got any magic resist, of course. Well, look at Rise's build. Uh, sorry, Wicked's build. He's actually gone for the Sorcerer's Boots early on and the Tear of the Goddess. So instead of going for that Catalyst the Protector early on. Yeah, straight in there. Wants to get that tier stacking as early as he possibly can. Let's see how he, uh, well he does that one because right now Snoopy is coming up towards his top lane and it means that he needs to land that Rune Prison here. Kevin right now does have Flash available. So that's his... Basically escape with that Shadow Dash as well. We'll see how that one goes. We can see the Kha'Zix and Nasus joining in there as well. And this could turn out really, really interesting. Actually, Snoopy has backed away now, so that leaves Wicked all alone. They're going to try Flash. Taunt didn't land. Wicked flashed straight out of that one. Very, very quick reactions there. And Ocelot immediately backing away from that one. CS-wise, we've seen Morella Nomicon just being picked up by Froggen. He's going to keep his lead extending. He's going to keep pressing on there. And this is actually, this is creating a problem for Ocelot. Because as you just saw there, he wants to start roaming. He wants to start picking up the kills. He wants to start getting the ball rolling for Kha'Zix to try and get as much kills as he can to try and get those items built out quicker. But Froggen's not going to let him. He's going to keep on farming that mid lane. It's what Froggen does. He is a beast in terms of farming. And he's just not buying time for Ocelot. No, he's <laughs> He doesn't really care about Ocelot at this point. It's like, get rid of the wave, time after time after time. Get, yeah, you know, those items in there. You need Morellonomicon being his first choice, along with getting that tier stacking right now. Meanwhile, in his bottom lane, the turret is once again going to be taking a beating from Nip and Candy Panda. And with this wave, it will go down. First one of the game goes to SK. First to it of the game, and that's going to open up the pressure across the lane. We see that Herkibot is close by taking down that red buff. They're continuing to push. There's a pink ward in that bush. Herkibot will get the red. This may open up an opportunity for Dragon here. We already see Ocelot going down, but he's actually just backing off when there was a ward spotting his position. But look at Froggen. Froggen is doing what Froggen does best. He's taking the Wraith Camp and the Wave every time. Ocelot is, uh, sorry, Snoopy is starting to let him get that farm, which is why he's starting to build up that gap ever so slowly, constantly building up the gold lead. And you can see it's already 400 gold between him and Ocelot. And Kha'Zix is a tremendous farmer. Yeah, and he's just gone straight in for that Man and Moon here. As we can see that Snoopy once again is waiting for Kevin in his top lane. Wicked has no flash, so can't use that to engage. But now Snoopy coming in here. How is Kevin going to handle this one? Shadow Dash is suit. There's the ultimate coming down from Snoopy. Room prisoned up. He does not have a flash to get away from this one. They're keeping him slowed down, but can they get those final shots? Here comes the laser, and Wicked will get the last one off with the overload. Nice gank coming out of Evil Geniuses. Brilliant, but SK Gaming quickly reacting to that one. There's saying you're gonna take a kill, we're gonna take a dragon, and that is a gold advantage actually gained by SK Gaming. And now they're going in for the blue buff as well, which means Froggen is not gonna have that at his disposal. On the other side oh, though, the as I say that, oh yeah, the hook landing in there, box goes down. Crepo could be in danger here. In fact, he is gonna fall from this one, and it's Ocelot that gets the kill. That, that just wasn't what EG needed at this stage of the game, for that Kha'Zix who's fallen behind in the CS to be picking up a kill. 
a great kill in the top and instantly countered and you know as you mentioned that was not what they wanted they gave ocelot that kill he's now going to have enough gold to go get that brutalizer if he wants to complete it the man immune already half built up there wicked's trying to put as much pressure on this top turret he's not going to be able to take it down we're going to see kevin returning to lane just in time he hasn't quite got that sunfire cape ready yet but he is going to try and catch the shadow dash on towards wicked Wicked just turns around, blows his ultimate on towards Kevin, tries to drop everything he has and just keep him up bay. Froggen now getting pinged on here. Can he find a switch to the mid lane? The laser comes in. Dark Passage was given out by Nip though. Just that little bit of shielding, but it took half his hit points off already. Yeah, and that's the real danger coming out of Froggen. He's going to constantly throw them out of the light, finally not quite landing onto him. And I tell you what, he wouldn't have escaped with much there if that combo would have actually landed. Ocelot in the meantime has pushed this bottom lane right onto the inner turret. Yeah, quick turnaround and Ocelot suddenly, he's got that freedom. This is what we mentioned with that bottom turret. The moment he went down, he's bought freedom for SK Gaming and more importantly, bought freedom for Ocelot. Froggen was keeping him in that mid lane for so, so long, but where is Snoopy going? Are they going to try and track around the back of him? No, they're not. It's going to come back in towards that mid lane. Maybe trying to go for a bit of a gank on towards Candy Panda. That mid lane has been pushed down. Froggen continues to try and work it down. He's got his laser back available because his cooldown's already stacked up fairly high. Yeah, it doesn't even need it at this point. Candy Panda actually using the two shot barrage just to get rid of that minion wave as fast as he possibly can as well. And right now, we don't see any replying turrets for Evil Geniuses. We'll see if that changes. Kevin actually going in on towards Wicked. Herculebot is coming up. The taunt will land onto Wicked, but can they lock him down from this one? He is going to throw all he's got here at Kevin and Snoopy now coming in from the side. And the laser as well. Kevin's going down here. Or is he? He gets the shield up just in time. We've got Froggen coming in from the bottom side of the river. Can he? Does he oh, have the hook? range? No, the hook comes in onto him as well. Now he turns around and Froggen is going to die. Wow. Candy Panda that picks up the kill. What a turnaround from SK. Brilliant counterplay, and you also saw Herkibot. Snoopy tried to do his charge, the boar tried to charge it towards him. Herkibot stepped in front of it and blocked it straight off. That would have been the kill on Kevin, but instead it baited in Froggen and bought them enough time. It does mean there's going to be a turret exchange going on, though. You're going to see Evil Genius is picking up the middle turret. Meanwhile, the top turret goes down, but look at Ocelot. He's going aggressive in his bottom wave. They're going to work on this inner turret of their own. They have got Kevin with him now. He just came down towards there with that stand united, and now they're keeping pressure on all of the inner turrets. But look Look at EG, they're continuing to pressure the mid lane. Nobody there to react them, they're gonna get it. This is gonna be turrets going across all of the map. They have nothing to stop this inner turret going down the mid lane. This is really crazy. I, I don't think really worth it for SK Gaming. Oh, I mean, behind. they're gonna lose middle inner turret. This is where things could get better for them. If they're able to get this Kazix in for kills, he is moving in right around the backside now as he does get those void spikes across him. Actually, we'll use his ultimate here because EG are putting down a lot of damage into him. Yellow P, Rocket jumps in there, but they're not able to Let's get the laser. kill. There's a laser coming across, but no finisher from Frog. No finisher. Very, very close, though. That's going to be a light binding landing on Nip, though, but wow, quick, quick action across the board there. So that's two inner turrets that just went down the top lane and the mid lane. Meanwhile, the bottom inner turret was also very low. Quick pace action suddenly starting off, which all created, look at that, half the hit points gone off that, just a thousand remaining on that bottom turret. And that, this is kind of the game that I feel that SK wanted to get going on here, because EG are happy farmers. Ocelot, he wanted to start getting across the map. They got that mobility that I was just talking about. We saw alternate having, they got that mobility on the map. We already saw Kevin using that Stan United. The Ghost was used by Herkibot. They wanted to create the plays. EG just responded well. And you know, it was very clever play from Yellow Pink Crepper to shock train down that middle lane. And that's the thing with Ocelot now that Mana Moon is going to be becoming a Mura Mana pretty soon from that one uh, with the stacks which is currently for 488. He's got the Brutalizer. His last Whisper is going to be finished soon. And that's the point where the Kha'Zix really becomes a danger. Those Void Spikes are going to be hammering away at whoever is the target in the end. We can see him there also a lot in this bottom lane. And you can see exactly the amount of damage. Able to farm very easily now. The confidence this would give Ocelot and SK, like, he's, like they mentioned in the earlier show, he has been very down, but today he's happy. He's got his green scarf on. He, he seemed delighted. He's like, this is a, this is a color for happiness. Green so means we're like, go. Fine. Green means go. He actually walked the dream hack as well today, by the way. There's a good 40 minute walk. He says, I, know I need time alone. I need to walk. I was like, I'm about to get a taxi. Come with me. No, I'm going to walk. I think he just doesn't like you. <laughs> That's harsh. <laughs> Who could ever be in such a state? Because right now, SK Gaming pushing up into the jungle of EG and getting the wards down, and they're going to be stealing away another blue buff. Last time this happened, Crepo went in and got hooked. 
and then destroyed. MK, mm. they're not messing around here. They're this making is a base race. But look at this, EG are going down the middle as well. They are going down the middle. EG are going to get on towards the inhibitor turret. They're going to trade in inner turret right now. They're going to have to go back and de deal with this. Herkibot's going back. They're going to have enough to take down this inner turret. But my god, this is an actual base race opportunity. No, Ocelot's going back. They realized it. But they're not going to get back in time. Nope. Evil Geniuses have pulled the rabbit out of the hat. They're going to get straight around. They're going to take this inhibitor turret down before they even get close to base. Brilliant, brilliant decision there from EG. They lost their inner turret in that top lane, which means bottom and top now have no no turrets outside of the inhibitor turrets, but look how far they've pushed down that middle lane just because of SK's decision to go for those inner turrets in the bottom and the top lane. Right now, Dragon is there, Pink Ward down from EG, and this will be an EG Dragon, and will bring them really close to leveling up the gold there as Frogger missing light binding went straight between Ocelot and Hercubion. It looks like SK wants to challenge for this Dragon right now. He may well try to, and if Frogger lands one of those light bindings. I feel that someone may well get deleted. He's got that needlessly large rod now because that laser will be doing so much more. Evil Geniuses really want to start the dragon off. You can see Frog and he's trying every little chance, every little nook and cranny for that blind light binding to go out. That luminescence does keep landing. Evil Geniuses keep on stepping this up. But they have to start things soon. Kevin's continuing to split push in that top lane. He's got nothing to stop him getting on towards the inhibitor, so they're going to have to deal with this one just to just keep him oh, busy. SK are happy. Snoopy has snuck across. The board dashed across. He may well try and come around the side. SK Gaming, Nif is just there. If he can come around the side and cast two or three of them in that ultimate true shot, Barrage comes across this time. It is going to burn EG pretty low. The Void Spikes is doing work on them as well. Light Binding comes out, still doesn't clash. Here comes Snoopy. Yeah, they didn't realize where he was. Their barrier used by FK, and he's in a lot of trouble here. Candy Panda trying to escape. Snoopy might not have enough damage to finish him off and may even go down. He does go down. That's a one for one right now. Is there going to be any more action in here? Wicked is in the back line, but he may pay the price for this one with his life as well. Yellow Pete is starting to back away from that. Oh, the hook mid air! Wow, a mid air hook coming out of Nip. Yellow Pete will find his death, and it's a triple kill for Candy Panda. Amazing from SK. Wow, so many good Thresh plays we see. The light binding coming out from Frog, and he's not done yet. That laser's going to be available in just a couple of seconds. He may even be able to try and get the steal. He's back up now. Let's see if he goes for it. He's not got any vision, so this is going to be a fairly blind laser if he does go for it. He's positioning himself, goes for it. Not enough damage, and SK with ready for that one. They stepped away. They stopped putting damage down on it. Very good play. It's 6-2 now, SK Gaming. And despite the maneuvering that EG have been pulling off, the gold lead is in SK's favor. They have a 4K lead. It's still 4-4 in turrets, but everything. And remember, though, EG have exposed that inner turret, inhibitor turret, inhibitor down. <laughs> Good lord, I, can't I know what speak. you meant. I know what you meant. And that's the day, and I think that's the one thing that's actually going to prevent SK from doing the objectives that they really want to do at this point, because they know that they have to keep that inhibitor up for as long as they possibly can. Uh, and you now, EG, if they start pushing other lanes here, SK, then EG might just well try and push straight through there and get those uh, super minions streaming down the map. But, saying that, you know, the only turrets outside of the base up right now for EG are actually in that middle lane anyway, so you'd expect that SK would be there. Okay, so we got a couple of spikes of damage about to come out here. Ocelot has just gone back. He did get the last Whisper on there. Last Whisper was also picked up by Candy Panda and that Sheen as well, which he's had earlier on. Rabadon's death cap just been completed by Froggen as well. Meanwhile, the... Almost, almost, he just legions on him. He's got that normal magic mantle ready, ready to go and turn it into a rolling ball. We've not quite got the gold Herkibot. So that's going to try and nullify a little bit of damage from Froggen. But as we saw, if he catches onto someone, it is going to hurt. But he didn't quite have enough to take down Candy Panda. The barrier kind of helped, though. Yeah, and the Stan United from yeah. Kevin is like, got no help? Okay, now I'm shielded up for a good while from this one, and that's what kept him alive. Plus a brilliant micro play coming out as well, able to uh, get rid of Snoopy, who found himself all alone chasing the AD carry at the back end of that fight. So, 4,500 gold is what we're sitting at right now in favor of SK Gaming. Let's not forget, they're looking for their first victory here for the summer split in the LCS Europe. Didn't expect that SK would be the team that you know, are right down there now, looking for that first victory. Of course, NIP were in a similar position. They've already recorded a victory over Fnatic just a little bit earlier on. So, let's see if SK can do the same here. 
Kevin's just realizing he may well be being collapsed on here. Just to the golems, the rest of Evil Geniuses are coming down towards him. He's actually got two turrets between them, but EG may well try and catch someone out. Oh, just got caught vision with the ward there. So they did see Crepo. Crepo with that Oracle will clear it out. And that's going to actually give a warning sign to Kevin. He comes around, goes face to face with Yellow Feet. Yellow Feet putting a burst damage down. And that Shadow Dash quickly buys him an escape route. The rest of SK game in their response to this one, they're going aggressive, chasing in here. Crepo just goes straight past the ward. They may try and get them on towards the tribush, or are SK Gaming, they may well just try and rush for the mid here. They are. And I think that's the best thing that they can do is they've got EG completely zoned out. There's no wards there for EG, so if SK with the Oracle of Nif realize that, they may even decide to wait and uh, lay a trap for them. As it goes right now though, SK not gonna be concentrating on one thing, and that is this outer turret here in the mid lane. That's gonna go down without any real problems. So it's 5-5 five, five in turrets. That does give them that 5,000 gold that he mentioned was slowly being built up there. EG do react to that one, trying to create a play, and this time it backfired for them. First time they were successful. He, wicked. Has gone off towards that top lane though. He's getting farm going and he's going to start stacking out with that Seraph's Embrace. Will be ready and waiting to go soon. It is very, very close to the Man Immunity. You can see the Tier of the Goddess almost stacked up and the Man Immunity also almost completed. So all of the items are about to be transformed in the next 100 hits they do, which won't be too long, just in the next five minutes. Bottom lane, Yellow Pete is all on his own. So he's getting a bit of free farm. We'll see how far he pushes that wave down though, because that may signal SK to just charge at the mid. Yeah, and this game is really about making the right decision at this stage. If you make one wrong decision, the other team, you know, if they make the right decision at that same point, could end up pushing straight through here. That's how open things are at this stage. SK, you know, they've had problems like this before, where they've had leads and things have kind of dwindled away from them. And if there's one team that knows how to stall out a game, that would be Evil Geniuses. Well, they were in this position against Gambit, remember? They had the advantage, they were up in kills, they were up in towers. And they were up in, a long way up in gold, and, and still Gambit managed to turn it around on yep. them. And it's simply a case of they just have that problem. They've had it against Fnatic so many times where they've been way ahead in gold, and they still managed to somehow hit that 40 minute threshold, and panic sets in, and they just managed to just do one wrong move, and it backfires on them. Their early game is great, their late game is still questionable and it's EG that realize this and now they're going to try and create a moment of pressure straight down for that naked inhibitor. Yep, going straight in there for this one. Let's see if they're able to challenge for it. Shen is actually away from the rest of the SK Gaming team, although that is of course a Shen with Stan United off cooldown and will be able to join the party if needed. He's actually, oh no, he starts to recall but I think the rest of the team told him to just stay there, just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. That might actually, funnily enough, alleviate the pressure from this inhibitor. Yeah, it's going to buy him a little bit of time. Crepo's going to ward out this blue buff area of field, and Baron is being set up for. We no are at the 27 there. minute mark, there is. Ward coverage, no ward coverage at all from SK. I would tell a lie, they just stepped over that one. Crepo still hasn't seen it. But while it's still happening, look at Kevin, he's almost up to that turret, but Wicked has gone back to prevent that split push. And he has got Teleport, remember, Wicked, so he can join the party if required. I think Kevin's decided, yeah, that's quite far enough. I'm going to go back to bite. That's alleviated the pressure and bought time for everybody to go back and push the waves. Yeah, Mirror Manic is now done as well here for all slot. We saw the Iceborne Gauntlet being picked up by Candy Pan, so that's all good. As we see the laser come in the middle lane there from Froggen, just push the wave back. Candy Panda was actually there. And Need to be careful here because Candy Panda, with that last whisper, with the Iceborne Gauntlet, with the Spirit of the Elder Lizard, he's going to be able to stick to you very easily. And well, that dragon's been taken down very quickly. That's going to get dropped. Evil Genius Spirit picked that one up. That keeps the gold. It's just 3,000 gold between them. So, in that little bit of play that's been happening there, Evil Genius has gained 2,000 gold. They were 5k behind, they're now 3k behind. They're just slowly creating little opportunities, little bits of farm, but they keep managing to pull their way back into SK. And SK got to be careful here. Obviously, the fact that they're six up in kills is going to feel good, but they realize it is still a very, very close game. All right, now, Monkeybot's going to be going home here as well. I'm assuming he's got around about 800 gold to spend, and that will give him his boots of swiftness, so he's able to... Uh, work through those slows and get himself where he needs to be to kick off those fights. And I'm quite surprised that SK in the meantime haven't gone towards that Baron area and tried to get some vision down. I mean, they know that there is that Oracle and Crepo, so the likelihood of losing them later down the line 
and certainly pretty high, but Nick can also do a clear out job there, and they need to make sure that they have that vision, because uh, if EG get that opportunity, they may go and take it. They may well do, Kevin Spin. Just backing away from Wicked there, wasn't too sure, they haven't tried to see how close they can get at fighting. Oracle, of course, on Nip is going to clear out those Baron Wards that EG had managed to bully their way in there. Now it's just going to clear out, all the gold's going to get picked up, Nip will whip that one down. That's going to put the elements of doubt in towards Evil Genius' mind now, and they are going to start breakneck heading towards there. There's a few members away, a long way away from this one. SK might be able to burn this down quick enough. Right now, the E from Lux goes in and they say, well guys, we need to react to this one. There goes the laser, it's only going to help SK take it down though. The hook not quite landing, but look at Candy Panda. He's gone very deep into that one. Herkybot going away, there's the ultimate coming out of Snoopy. Can they get in? A good box put down by Nip as the ultimate comes across from Ezreal and they've already picked up one kill. Make that two as Snoopy dies as well. Yellow P going to get destroyed and it's eight. Zero for three here for SK Gaming with picking up the Baron as well. Will they continue to push through? I mean, they've got <laughs> they've got a five versus two scenario now. These turrets aren't going to last. Everybody getting caught out from SK. There's a big wave in the top lane as well to just keep them busy. So if somebody's going to have to deal with that one in a moment. There's a bottom wave also being pushed up that Kevin was working on. And SK is certainly going to take down this inner turret. Remember, with that Baron buff, the regen will can't start ticking. They have 10 seconds still to try and get some damage down on towards its inhibitor turret. Can they expose EG's inhibitor? Look at Frogger though, just off of the side. If he can land his combo right, which he's going to do, goes on towards Sniff, gets the light binding in there instead. Didn't choose to put the laser down. And that is going to be the first inhibitor of the game being picked up by SK. Really strong play there with that Baron on as well. The health that's been weeded away from them. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin wanted that. He's like, <laughs> that was my land come back. Uh, but they're going to lose the blue buff here oh, as no, well. They're not. <laughs> or not. Or not. That's why he didn't use it earlier on. Yeah, he's like, well, they're going to go back. I'm just going to get my blue buff back. It's all good. Keeps that cooldown ticking. But SK came in by themselves a big spike in power. The Baron buff alone will be strong, but the fact that they have a 7,000 gold advantage and those super minions shoving their way down that mid lane, the only lane they had exposed by evil geniuses will buy them a bit of freedom, and that is certainly going to put a lot of pressure on towards EG. Yellow Peak, though, let's not forget, he's on Tristana. Tristana will get stronger as the game goes on. Only at level 14 right now, there's 15. He's going to keep on farming, but the problem is, Candy Panda is 504 and yeah. has that nearly a 3,000 gold advantage over him. Yeah, gonna have more of an impact certainly at this stage uh, with how things go. And EG, you have to feel that to win this game, they're probably gonna have to hold out as long as he can. With that being said, though, you've got the likes of Nasus in there and Shen and Kazix even, who are just going to be getting stronger themselves. So it's a very hard thing to call at this point. We see the GA complete now as well for Ocelot. So that's going to make him even more aggressive with that safety net of the Guardian Angel. Yeah, and, and like you were just saying, you know, they need to pull off a great move. And honestly, it needs to be Frog and either just simply deleting someone in a quick combo or maybe Snoopy just getting in there, getting that ultimate across multiple members. So we'll see how it works out. If Snoopy can land that ultimate, then Wicked could lay his ultimate on top and just blow them all up. It's possible. It's, they've all got a lot of damage right now, so it's not beyond the realms of possibility. But SK are looking very strong. They're going to keep on pushing on towards this bottom turret. Look at that, though. The hook on towards Crepo and just them Void Spikes alone dropping Crepo to half hit points. Yeah, half health gone in an instant there. And that's the danger, the hook coming across Frog and actually able to shield up for a decent amount, but you can pretty much break through it there, especially with this, uh, this Ezreal Q's just being the perfect poke in this scenario. Nifet also takes a bit of a hit. Candy Panda went up inside the base to try and force them away from this one. SK won that inhibitor turret. Well, Kevin, just shy of 4,000 hit points here, continuing to keep the pressure on the top lane, which is actually moving SK into a 4v4 in this bottom. Ooh, arcane shift there from Candy Panda, pulls him out of the light binding, lands it just at the last second. Now, keeping the poke down, remember there's still, what, 90 seconds? No, tell a lie, it's just about 60, uh, 30 seconds remaining on this Baron buff, so not much longer, SK Gaming not really able to siege this one down. EG are holding out quite nicely. Yeah, they're going to be able to hold pretty well with uh, with everything that looks basically is going to be throwing out to them there. And Tristan obviously with that explosive shot able to help clear things off faster. But look at this. You see Kevin doing what Shen does best and pushing up towards that top inhibitor. So he's going to be doing 
Slight bits of damage here, slight bits of damage there, but in the end, it's just a game of time, and he will get that down. He did get half the hit points off it. Now SK going to push in with his wave. You get another couple of shots, the laser coming out, it goes up towards Candy Panda, still drops into half health, that's going to force SK, they're going to back away from this one, the siege is over, but they did a lot of damage, that top turret taken down fairly substantially, and they're just going to try and pick up that dragon en route, Evil Geniuses, time to just clear the waves and shove them out of base. Yeah, they need to use this opportunity here to get a few wards down to make sure that they've got full vision of where SK are going to be going but also to maybe push these waves out because right now it's just constant, constant pressure from all over the place. Of course, the Super Minion being probably the biggest as they start to stream up that middle lane. You can see that the Siphoning Strike right now is doing, you know, for a jungle nas, it's not the, the huge amount of damage that we saw from the God Bro in that last game, of course, because he quite frankly just doesn't have that farm, but it's still a relatively large amount. And Probably even more valuable is, you know, the fact that he can damage those turrets in this scenario. Magic resistance and hit points all popping in for SK Gaming there, so they very conscious of the laser. 490 ability power by Froggen right now. Very conscious of being picked up and cleared by that one. Just use that laser to clear the wave as well. They didn't quite get a ward down on the Baron, actually, which will be up in around about 80 seconds time. And SK Gaming already going to get in there. And if without Oracle, they're going to clear out all of those wards that they just get placed there, which probably EG were kind of expecting. And SK setting out those aggressive wards. They want to try and catch someone out. They may well be able to do that. Crepo just in the bush there actually manages to get on the Glitter Lance onto Nif. And Nif backs away. Yeah, not really a problem for him there, but you never know. If that happens, it gives the EG an opportunity to further push things out and alleviate even more of that pressure coming in. And there is the inhibitor respawning as well, but EG are on their way to the top lane. They know that that turret is low thanks to the work that Kevin did a little earlier on. Yeah, they've just completely switched it up. They said, fine, you've done a lot of work on that top turret. SK, everybody up to the top. That Kevin split push the bottom now. They're keeping the lanes. They're going top and bottom just to keep EG as stretched as much as they can. So it's keeping Wicked away from the fight. If it were to break out, the hook may come out here. Nif trying to come in towards him. They are just going to go for that free inhibitor though. Yeah, and that's a good choice from them as well. Working in towards those turrets has not been the most successful. And that's the thing, you know, Candy Panda, as the Ezreal, doesn't have the biggest uh, biggest range here. And certainly when you factor in the, uh, the Tristana there, who's going to have huge, huge range as things build up. And already will be able to way outrange Candy Panda. It's hard for him to actually get in there without really risking taking too much damage. They are landing more shots on towards this inhibitor though, and EG not really able to defend it. Snoopy looking like he wants to try and pick someone out, just simply charges on towards Herkibot, tries to keep him away, hasn't thrown out that ultimate yet, the inhibitor slowly going down, it will drop eventually, Dark Passage was used there, that's a long cooldown for Nif there, so maybe that won't be available for Candy Panda, they want to get one more hit on this one, they do take down that inhibitor, SK trying back out, but the laser's going to catch on towards Candy Panda, he's going to get caught out, he's still alive though, back just off the side there, they can't quite get on towards him, and SK can even get turn this one back on his head, Herkimo very low, SK needs to disengage, but Ocelot jumps in, takes down Snoopy, he's going to get caught up in the light finding, but that's going to be the standard night coming in, Ocelot Guardian Angel is popped, that's enough, can they turn it around, the Luminescence, yes, Dark wow. Passage is there, Ocelot gets away, that was a 1 for 0 fight, but everything was burnt from both teams. A 1 for 0, and as you said, doesn't, it's not that clear cut when it comes to uh, to these fights, actually. Uh, EG having still a lot of hit points remaining after that one. So SK from that can gather that, okay, we are stronger than them right now, but it's definitely not a lot. And that means that a bad engage coming out from SK Gaming could actually cost them a, uh, a lot in terms of, you know, EG with 40 minutes into the game. Spawn times are long right now. And that's going to make it really, really uh, easy for EG if they do manage to win a good fight to be pushing out completely and maybe having an inhibitor of their own. Yeah, Yellow P is, is gaining ground effectively on Candy Panda because the longer the game goes on, the longer Tristana will get. And there's the Infinity Edge just being completed. So that damage that they may be needed, Candy Panda got away with nothing. Yep. That little spike now may be enough to take Candy Panda down if he gets caught out like he did from Snoopy. And that is what's keeping EG ticking here. They are just... Just about seven and a half thousand gold behind, seven five in turrets. It's going to be all about the Baron fight and really who gets the cleanest engage. I can tell you the one thing though, Kevin is stacking that hit points very high and Herkibar already starting the Baron off. Yep, going to be kicked off here from that one. No vision whatsoever. You just saw the hook come through there. And actually, I thought Nip would have uh, followed things up. In the end, decides not to do it. And Kevin is just waiting off towards the side there. Baron 
being stopped here. Uji still waiting in there. RSK gonna go for it. They managed to get the hook up towards Crepo. Is he gonna be able to escape? Well, Wild Growth putting himself there. This is a messy fight all over the place. It's Frog and Slazer not doing what it needed to do. And I think SK will be able to battle their way through this one. There is a Kazix jumping in. Gonna get the reset from Wicked. Can he get now over towards Yellow P? He's used a flash here. Will flash in on top of him. Gets the kill as he gets knocked back. And that is four kills for nothing for SK Gaming. That's exactly what they needed, and may well just be able to push straight down the mid lane here. Remember, the inhibitor was taken down, but they've not really got the minions there, so if anyone wants to tank it up, Kevin is very high on hit points. Look at that shield. He's going to be able to get him towards one Nexus to it. They should be able to take this one down. Frogan is backing away from this one. SK Gaming could be picking up their first win and joining NIP at 1 and 4. That also takes Evil Genius. He's joining Fnatic at 2 and 3. Can you believe it? Really well played by SK Gaming in this matchup. The hook lands on towards Frog and just towards the end here. They're going to throw the box down, but it doesn't matter. The Nexus is going to be the target, and that will be the game for SK Gaming. Fantastic performance, and this is what they needed to do. Come in with a fresh mindset today into this game.